How many of you are good at it? You can, yeah, some of you were. So on the count of three, you're going to shout at me what your uh, sport that you played in high school was. And if you didn't, you can just shout nothing, okay? No judging, no shame. One, two, three. I heard basketball. So that, hey, speaking of basketball, you're looking at the highest scorer freshman year of high school. Okay, okay, woo! <laughs> I can brag about something, right? Now, what I didn't tell you is that didn't mean anything on this team because we were 0 and 8. We didn't, we, yes, exactly. Another feat, right? We did not win a single game. We stunk. In fact, I think this is the only reason that the administration did this. At the end of the season, they had us play the dads, thinking that we were going to win. No, we didn't. We even lost to our dads. It was pathetic. Now, I think we only lost by like three to five points, but still. <laughs> We didn't win at all. Man, some of us are so competitive that we win even when we're just practicing against ourselves, right? It's like three seconds left. Langdon has the ball. Three, two, it's going to be good. He shoots. And some of our, us are ultra competitive when we miss. It's like with .009 seconds on the clock, Langdon was fouled. And he gets another shot to win, right? Why do we do this? Because we want to win. It's the same reason fans spend thousands of dollars to fly to a game and then spend all the money at the hotels and spend all the money on the food and the tickets. Why? So they can see their team win. So they can see their team win. Everybody wants to win at life, right? Why? <laughs> because as Pastor Julian already said, winning is better than not winning. <laughs> I love that he said that. In fact, one of the reasons people go through difficulty and struggle is simply because they feel like they're losing. Like, man, why, why can't I get on top of this? Why, why can't I take a step in the right direction? But not only do we want to win, God wants us to win too. As Christ followers, he, he has even given us this identity of overcomers. He's like, hey, I want you to win so badly that you are an overcomer. That is one of your identities. And the neat thing is he's also here to help us win. He doesn't just give us a new identity. He's like, I will help you win. Isn't it awesome that we have a God that says, I will help you win? I will help you win. I want you to be thinking about that. All that said, and Pastor Julian already said this, God thinks and works in different ways than we do. So let's take a look at the Bible to see how God thinks and works. So God asked one of his followers, his name was Samuel, he's like, hey, I want you to go anoint the new king. That would be pretty cool, right? So, so God tells Samuel which family to go to, but he doesn't reveal which specific brother would be anointed as king. And when Samuel arrived... Man, he sees one of the brothers strapping, strong, good-looking. And he's, he's thinking something like this to himself. He's like, wow, look at him. He, he must be the winner. He must be the person that's going to be anointed king. Now, God knew what Samuel was thinking, so he ended up sharing this with Samuel. Uh, look what it says in 1 Samuel 16. It says, The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Now, to make a long story short, God picks David, who we uh, eventually learn in the Bible was a man after God's own heart. God looks within. See, Samuel didn't do anything wrong. Nothing wrong. 
but he was basing his thoughts on the outward. Man, this guy is so good looking, he's so strapping, he's so strong. This must be our next king. And we can do the same. We often base how we feel about ourselves on how we're doing outwardly, don't, don't we? Man, it just seems like everyone else is catching the brakes but me. What's wrong with me? You've heard this before. Why can't I have good things, <laughs> right? Why can't I have good things? I guess we just can't have good things. Get this, it even goes deeper. We even may rate God's performance on what happens outwardly. Like, God, why are you answering every single else's person's prayers but mine? Why can't I get the breaks too, God? I, I'm here too. Have, are you hearing any of mine? See, we can all feel this way at times. And because we do, what I'm about to say is so important. In fact, if this is the only thing you take away from this, please hear this. This story that we just talked about reveals to us that what God looks at and what he focuses on is what's going on inside of us. He looks within. That's what he's looking at. That's what he's focusing on. That's what's important to him. And not only does he focus on the inside, look at what he does within, okay? In Philippians 1, it says this, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in who? You. In you. In you. See, this shows us that God's working to build something great inside of us. In fact, this is where God often does some of his best work. It's within. He's like, I want to build you within. So what is this work that, that God wants to do within us? What, what is he trying to build within us? We, we get a clue in Galatians 5. It says this, and you've, you've heard this verse before, so it might be a reminder for many of you. But it says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Say it with me. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We've heard that before, many of us. Against such things, there's no law. See, this shows us that God is interested, ready, in who you're becoming. He's interested in who you're becoming. That's his focus He's working to turn you into a winner of a human being. You see the difference between how we often look and think and how God often thinks. Again, I said this earlier. We often base winning off of how the outward is going. Man, I just got a new car. It's just, it's going amazing, but uh, I haven't gotten the new house yet, so going to have to strive for something there. If we don't have the new house, maybe we go after the fit body. If we don't have the fit body, and there's nothing wrong with these things, okay? Don't, don't take that from anything that I'm saying. You're like, man, if I don't have that, well, maybe if I can get the promotion, uh, if I can get some higher pay, like three more bucks an hour, and then you're like, crap, that meant nothing because of inflation. Now I need five more bucks an hour. And, and, or it's like, man, greater opportunities, a better education. Man, if, uh, hey, I don't have any of those things. Maybe I can just have some nicer vacation, some nicer toys. Do you see we, how we often rate and focus how our lives are going. And I already said this. There's nothing wrong with having any of these things or opportunities at all. But when we base whether we're winning or not solely on these things, we may put ourselves, as Pastor Julian's been talking about a lot, into overdrive or over-functioning just to get these things. Well, I guess I'm going to have to work 12 extra hours a week if I don't even get a day off a week so that I can get that nice thing that everybody else has. And then what's happening inside? 
right? Or even if we don't do that, we may feel like we're losing when we don't have these types of things or opportunities. God's thinking, though, hey, who are you becoming? Who are you becoming? Someone who loves others well, who, who experiences God's freedom through peace, who's, who's patient with yourself and others, someone that's faithful and kind. To God, this is someone who's winning. Now, to be clear, God often blesses people outwardly and materially. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. And he often does that. But what's most important to him is, who are you becoming? Who are you becoming? And why is that so important? Why is who you're becoming matter so much? Pastor Julian said it this week, and he said it so awesome. We were talking about this series and where we want to go with this series, and he's like, this is why it matters so much. Because the inward wins every time. The inward wins every time. Now let me explain what I mean through a personal example, and maybe you've been here too. There's been several times in my life where I've been praying about something, asking God for something, and then just don't see it come to pass. There's also been many times in my life where I've been praying about something, and I'm at the exact place that I'm supposed to be, or I should say at least want to be. I'm like, my gosh, I'm at the exact place I want to be. This is what I prayed for. Why do I still feel like crap? Why do I still feel no peace inside of me? I thought having a little bit more money or a little bit more of this or uh, if I just got to this place in life, what went out? What went out in my life? The inward. Outwardly, everything was good. Within, <laughs> not so much. Inward won out even though outwardly things were good. You see, I think sometimes we're tempted to think that the inward, inward will take care of itself if everything works out outwardly. But, but again, how did that work out in my life at least? It didn't. I, I, I've, again, I've been to a few places before where almost everything outwardly that I wanted was there. It's like, okay, let me give you some other examples. Man, if I, if I just get the better job, if I just have a little more. Guys, we hear these stories often of people that get to these pinnacles, and they're still dying inwardly. Man, if I just, I, I'd treat them well if they treated me well. Heck, the Bible says that atheists will treat people well if they're treated well by, by other people, right? <laughs> right? Man, if this person was faithful to me, I'd be more faithful to them. Guys, if, if a relationship is stuck in that cycle of, well, if they're faithful first, if they're faithful first, if they're stuck in that cycle, someone's going to have to go first to break that cycle. See, the whole point is, if we wait for the outward to take care of the inward, we'll just be waiting. Or very disappointed. Wow, I thought this was going to change everything. Man, I've worked years towards this. Really hasn't changed much in here. Why? Because the inward wins out in the end. Now, I've got good news for you. This works positively as well. This works very... Say that, say that with the help of God, he starts giving you peace and you start growing in peace. You could be winning living in a La Jolla mansion or anywhere else in San Diego in a condo when he's given you peace. Because his peace isn't situational. 
If God develops some patience in you, he can help you wait out getting that promotion and remaining content whether you do or not get it. Or if he builds faithfulness in you, he can get you through good and difficult times. Hey, I'm going to stay faithful when it's good, and I'm going to stay faithful when it's difficult, because God, you're going to help me. Or if he builds self-control in, in you, you can be in control when everything in your life seems out of control. Or how about this one, the pinnacle of Christianity. As he, build love, he builds love in you and you learn to love God back and to love others. Uh, let me share a story. from. I, I've already shared this story a couple weeks ago, but I'm going to get into it a little bit more specifically. I shared with you at the breakfast service that I have someone in my family that had something happen to them when they were younger that was very egregious. Very, very wrong, should, should never happen to anyone. What I didn't tell you was the perpetrator was someone else in the family. So we had a victim in the family and a perpetrator in the family. And with the help of God, with boundaries, of course, with boundaries, I'll emphasize that, with the help of God, the victim in the family was able to forgive the perpetrator. And with the help of God, the perpetrator asked for forgiveness and changed that per person's life. And I remember when I found out about that, I was wondering to myself, I'm like, man, I really care about the victim here. I can't believe that happened to them. I wondered how I'd look at that person. Would I just, uh, even though my, the victim forgave, I was like, well, how, how will I respond to all this? Will I walk into the room and, and just always be reminded of this egregious thing that they did? Can I tell you, it has nothing, nothing to do with me at all. But I remember the day. I, I, I remember the time when I finally was able to start walking into the room and not even thinking about that anymore. Because God helped me forgive. It didn't even happen to me, but it was bothersome that it happened. God helped me forgive and helped me move on. And he did the same for the victim, and he did the same thing for the perpetrator. Again, all with boundaries, of course. But God redeemed, God restored, because he did something inward. And I don't say any of that to pat myself on the back or to pat the victim on the back. It had nothing to do with it. I've had so many times where I've carried bitterness and God has told me you haven't really forgiven that person yet. So that I haven't arrived. I haven't arrived. I'm just sharing a story to share that God really can change the inward. His projects work. They work. God working inwardly brought freedom to the victim in my family. Speaking of freedom, do you notice what the verse says? Tim, if you want to put that verse back up again, Galatians 5, 22, 23, when God works inwardly and it ends up affecting how they outwardly live, it says there's no law. No law. Zero law. Talk about freedom. Not having to live under the law? That's freedom. That's like Braveheart William Wallace freedom. Right? Freedom. Everybody wants to be free. And if you're free, you're winning. Do you see why God works on the inside? He wants you to win. He wants you to be free. When we know that God's main focus is the inside, I think actually God starts to make more sense. But I think he gets very confusing when we rate God's performance off of the outward things that we want him to do. I know that can happen with me. But when we focus on the outward, we often focus on the outward. And I'm, I'm not saying to stop. That's not the, please don't hear that. That's not the point of this message. We can still continue to have outward goals. N nothing wrong with that at all. 
like I said, God, you see it all throughout the Bible, all throughout generations, God blessing people outwardly with material things. It's not like, stop doing that. But we often focus on the outward. I'm just saying maybe it's time to focus on the inward as well. Because that's what God's focus is. God wants you to win, and he's inviting you to go inward. He'll work inside of you to make you the winner human being that you were meant to be. That he sees in you even when you don't. He sees the potential even if you're sitting here wondering, uh-uh, he can't work on this person. Yeah, he can. Yeah, he can. And so as, as we start to uh, close down this part of the message... I want you to choose one from the list that we read. And, and Tim, if you can, or Steve, one of you two, if you can put up that slide, um, just the, the slide about love and joy and peace. I want you to just choose one. I want you to choose one of these. We just read these from Galatians. Don't, don't focus on all nine. That can get overwhelming. You're like, I need help everywhere, PK. <laughs> um, just focus on one. Maybe for some of you, God's just like, you know what, just, just start with the core of what Christianity is, starting with love. God, would you, would you help me to love you and, and others better? I'm not going to be perfect at it, but would you help me? Or maybe you've noticed like, man, 2023, and that really, my situations were so up and down. I didn't have any joy and peace in my life, Lord. Would, would, you, would you help me in those areas? Or man, I, I just kind of noticed this past year for the last while, I'm just, I just snap at people, I judge people, I, I just don't have any patience for people. God, would you help me to be within? Would you build patience within me? Or for maybe for some of you, you're like, you know what, my, my kindness, my goodness, my gentleness, it, uh, I, I've just noticed lately a little bit more rude, cut people off, very, very mean to people. I, God, would you help me within to be a more kind or gentle person? Or maybe for some of you, you're going through something very difficult. You realize you're in a very difficult season, but you know it's going to take faithfulness to get you through. And you're just like, God, would you... I'm going through a difficult season. Would you help me? Would you build faithfulness inside of me? Or maybe for some of you, as I shared earlier, it's just everything in your life just seems out of control, but you desire to stay in control. God, would you build some self-control in me? Now I get what you might be thinking. <laughs> PK, I can't do this. Great. You were never meant to. It's not some within, looking within, inner power. It's God working on our inward. He's the one that works on the inside. And not only does he work within you, he'll complete his work in you. In Philippians 1.6, we're going to read it again in a different translation. It says this, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to... Completion. Completion. You know what I'm so thankful for? God is a finisher. He's a finisher. I'm so glad <laughs> that he doesn't have this attitude of like, yeah, I've kind of had enough of you at this point. <laughs> no more chances. <laughs> Um, or, you know what, I'm kind of tired. I, I think I'm not going to finish what I started. I think I'm done. Have you ever driven by buildings before and you're like, that never got completed. <laughs> That's not God. He finishes what he started in you. I'm so glad that God's a finisher. I'm so glad that God's not someone that gives up just because it gets hard. So as, as the worship team comes out to the front in a moment, I want, this is very important stuff because as Pastor Julian shared, the inward is what wins out. And again, that can be a very positive thing like we talked about. 
So let's bow our heads and close our eyes. And I just want you to take a moment and ask God, whether it's asking God or you choosing one. Like, God, here's, here's one of the nine that I want you to work on. I, I want you to work, build love in my heart, build faithfulness into my heart, build self, I don't know, talk, connect with God for a moment or two, and then Pastor Julian's going to share a few words. Here's a big one for you and for me, contentment. To be content with who God made you, to be content with your car, to be content with your house. To be content that you're still alive, now <clears throat> have you uh, have you seen on on TV sometimes there's a wealthy person famous and wealthy person that ends up in jail because they were doing some very dishonest thing to make even more money and what you and I think is like but they were already so wealthy why did they do that? Why? Because the inside. The inside, it wasn't enough. What lacked is what you and I lack. Contentment. We always want a little more. That's been the verse, I guess, that, the, that God has been speaking to me lately is, is godliness, which is a life in a relationship with God. Godliness with contentment. We're going to find a great wealth. And, and the great gain, if you go to the, the Greek, is great wealth. There's a treasure found in godliness, a relationship with God a friendship with God, a real friendship with God, and contentment. You're going to find great wealth. You're going to feel like a million bucks not having it. And people who have it, if they don't have contentment, they're going to feel like it's not enough. Contentment. It's all in the inside. That's why it wins every time. Yeah, I can give you a million dollars today. If you're not content, it's not going to fix it. Are you, you know what I'm talking about? The inside wins out. That's why God is so interested on the inside, inside like, like stuff like contentment. When I was about 22, I had a real bad relationship. And I, I was, I'm a surfer, and so a surfer's dream is to move to Hawaii one day. And so I was going through a hard time. I'm like, uh, if I move to Hawaii, my problems will go away. Have you ever had that thought? Only if I move to Arizona or Texas, maybe Florida, I don't know, Hawaii. But see, the problem is, here's the challenge. If the inside is not content, it's not at peace. When we get to Hawaii, there... I will be. My heart will be there. It's not like in, I can leave my discontentment in San Diego 
and move to Hawaii and go like, come on. Wherever we go, there you are. And so don't think it's a better circumstance, it's a better this or better that. We, what we need is really a heart that is content. And with that, we'll find great freedom. Not having to impress. Can you imagine? Can you imagine just for a second as I close? I promise. When pastors say that, usually it's 10 more minutes. But, but like I promise. But can you imagine living a life that you have nobody to impress anymore? Not even yourself. That your car is just perfect for you. Why? Because it works. Somebody? That your place is just perfect for you because it has a door and a window. That's contentment, my friends. If we're trying to impress our mom or dads or siblings or even ourselves and so that we can feel successful, we may fall in, in a rat wheel of discontentment and God accidentally becomes a genie God, and He's not a genie God. He's our Father. You are enough. You are enough. What you have is enough. All we need is a heart that can see it. So help us, Holy Spirit, to see all the blessings we have, God. We have so much. But we're so blind to it, God. Would you open our spiritual eyes, God? And give us contentment, God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Let's stand up and worship the King that can make ungrateful people like me thankful.